Hey, check it out. If you actually look at those panes that are scrolling by, those are actually camera angles you cannot see in the normal game. Well, I thought it was a little interesting. What's going on, everyone? It's the Niskel! Welcome back to Resident Evil Code Veronica X. In the last episode, we used the Golden Lugers. We got to see the castle off in the distance, complete with lightning <laughs> and maniacal laughter. And now we have the second eagle plate. We're going to be using it. I didn't exactly show where, but let's just say we need to backtrack all the way back to the beginning of the game and head back to the prison. Uh-huh. Yeah, so uh, Resident Evil games are known for backtracking. But I don't think ever that far. I can't think of too many examples where I've had to go back to the very beginning of the game just to get something. And speaking of which, this something is one of the silliest things I've ever backtracked for in any game. Again, to my knowledge. Maybe there is something sillier, maybe I just blocked it out of my mind. But in this scenario, yeah, this is pretty silly. But, on the bright side, there's a lot of goodies for us to get, a lot of ammunition, and we get to pick up things that we dropped off at the very beginning. Because if you remember, we had to go through those metal detectors, there was stuff we couldn't take with us. Now we can get it. And it's actually really cool how it's all interconnected, and how just being able to go in one more direction, just one more pathway, we can actually make a complete loop around the prison. Oh yeah, and it's all stocked up with more zombies, excellent. Actually, I don't think I killed any of them on our first trip, so the dogs will still be in here. Yep. <laughs> Just woke it up from its nap, from its undead sleep. And if I'm right, more zombies? Hey, yeah, it did respawn them. So yeah, as soon as you start making your way back to the prison, more zombies are going to spawn, but no worry, these are just regular walkers. Shouldn't give you much trouble. And uh, this is actually where we need to use the blue eagle plate. Yeah. You never would have seen it, unless you, like, went up and examined everything, and unfortunately I didn't examine this. Right here! Here's where you use the second eagle plate. Oh my gosh! Oh jeez! Jump scares all over the place. It brings in the scary music for two zombies. Y you don't need to worry about it. It's two walking zombies. Now, if all of a sudden they threw dogs into the mix, okay, that would be worth the music. There you go. Two walkers down. We got a brand new area to explore. Let's go. And I should mention, on your way back to the prison, be sure that you have the hemostatic medicine either in your inventory or in the box. Okay? Because you're going to be using it here. Just keep that in mind. Every time I play this, I always go back here. Just want to make sure there's nothing I'm missing. But come back here first. This is your prison box. This is where you're going to be putting all your stuff. This is the only box in the prison... So pick up everything, and this is really cool. Like I said, it's all connected. Yeah, something is in the way. How about the box you're currently climbing on, Claire? Let's go ahead and move this box out of the way. And then, when we go through the door... Yeah, check this out. It's all connected. Because, oh my gosh, look at this! This is where we ended the first episode. This is where we met Steve again, and he was going, Wow, Chris Redfield. No relation to the girl I met earlier. But yeah, here you go. Please deposit any we can pick up what we left off here. And uh, yeah, I'm not putting anything in here. I'm taking these. And uh, speaking of the those things we're actually picking up, and I wanted to lock those zombies in for all eternity. But the B.O.W. gas rounds. I talked about them in a previous episode. Those are the only ones. The B.O.W. gas rounds that you pick up at the very beginning of the game are the only ones you get. Use them sparingly, you only got three shots. And again, those are crowd clearing, actually room clearing, uh, gas rounds. Highly effective against bosses. So keep in mind that those are like the ultimate weapon that you get in here for three shots. So we're definitely gonna save those for later. My gosh, those are really, really good. And actually, the B.O.W. gas rounds, it actually has to do with the Epsilon gas, and I think that is a... 
that's something hearkening back to Resident Evil 2. Oh, uh, Postex, help me out on this. What exactly is P Epsilon Gas? Thank you. Always the fountain of knowledge you are. Okay, now this place is really cool. There's not much to it, and it's actually really hard to pick up these items. I didn't even mean to get that first aid spray, but trying to get these handgun bullets, uh, it's not that easy. There we go. Now this place, it's actually, it's bringing back the atmosphere, okay? You're dealing with walkers again. No bandersnatches, no dogs. You're just dealing with the regular undead. And here you get to see that, uh, not, it's not all it's cracked up to be, this prison. They've been dealing in some, uh, in some bad stuff. Especially here, when you read this note. <laughs> guy talks about how, yeah, I was just working on some guy. Accidentally, uh, like, removed an eye, and he started screaming. I thought he'd like it. Yeah, so, so this one is, uh, it's very messed up. It's one special doctor who really shouldn't have a medical license under the supervision of Sir Alfred and his trust. You know, this doctor guy would never do anything bad, no. And this is also really cool. So this guy right here, it's actually going to be the centerpiece of one really good camera angle, this one right here, and then... Uh-huh. It starts moving. Oh, and then you got a lot of walkers. Wow, that guy power walked to me. I can never see zombies running in Resident Evil games. I know they do a lot later. And then they say, no, they're not zombies. They're, they're infected. And I'm thinking, yeah, exact same thing. But no, back in these older ones, they could never really run. But you got these guys who well, I could just consider like power walkers. It's like these guys used to be joggers before they became undead, and they're just like, whew, whew, gotta get my cardio up so I can kill this woman. We're gonna be making a couple more stops. Like, this is the main area that you wanna be because you've got the Blue Eagle plate, got a brand new place to go. So we're gonna clear all this place out, and then we're gonna make one last stop, and then we can just consider the prison off our list forever. Won't have to come back. There are a couple things in here to your liking. That red herb at the beginning of the room, you get these handgun bullets. And then, back over here. Not there, but over here. We got another one of these Durlumen cases that we can't open. Because it's secured with a simple lock. We don't have a lockpick, we got a lighter. Which technically, you know, if we heated it up enough, and then like smashed it against the ground, we, we could probably break it. Claire's heartbeat is going, which means she also saw the body bag move. Now, see, here's where the extra loading can be used as an advantage, because I really like this setup. She knows there's something going on in here, but she hasn't seen it yet. Oh, I can definitely hear it, though. Oh, that sounds disgusting. By the way, gear up for war, because this guy's tough. Okay, it sounds so cheesy, but I love when the soundtrack just kicks in with the lower stringed instruments. Jello and bass forever. Maybe I'm a little biased. But here we go, we have a super zombie that we have to take out. This doctor, he's a runner, an actual running zombie, and he takes so many hits, but eventually he goes down like any normal zombie, and then he has this little guy he was munching on. Get rid of both of them, and then situation over. I just really like that setup. Th this game likes to delve into older horror tropes, and that's probably one of my favorites, especially when the music kicks in. That's probably one of the funniest parts. It's just, the zombie's looking over, he's like, what? And then the music kicks in, and it's just like, oh no! He saw me! He's gonna come kill me! <laughs> he really liked that part. And it's also a pretty decent challenge, too. And all that, just for a fake eye. How far down does the rabbit hole go? I can tell you it's another place with bats. The 
The entire setup of the prison is also another thing that I really like about this section. Even though it's a really silly reason to have this section, it's still really cool to just... You see this messed up stuff where some of the inmates, it looks like they were just outright killed using the guillotine, a crazy guy experimenting on bodies, and then you come down here and you notice there's like an underground torture chamber and incinerators everywhere, and it's just, oh, it's so messed up. And you finally get down here and you're seeing all the all the dealings that were happening. Everybody's dead. They're all zombies. And again, that's a really nice horror setup. I really like it. Now, considering all that we've seen, such as the facility, the different monsters, this almost seems out of place, at least in my eyes. Because we're going through, we're going through like this, this high-end palace. We're going up to an old castle where there's maniacal laughter and lightning strikes. And then we come to here, which is absolutely screwed up. Because there's like torture devices, people are taking off fingers, you know, people are losing limbs just because, you know, in the name of science. And, uh... Or maybe just in the in the grand old scheme of good old-fashioned fun. Try to find your arm. I hit it somewhere in this room. And then we even go deeper. That's another thing. Everything's becoming more claustrophobic. We're getting into more dangerous dealings of death. I like this part. And here we go. Here's the uh, here's the room. The room. Doesn't seem like much. Take note of the floor there. Oh, sweet! We get to use a sword! Uh-oh. Huh? Oh, no. Well, of course there would be a gas trap. See those open vents? You gotta think, well, it's either gonna be water, gas, or, you know, nothing. Maybe it's just the drainage place. This is where all the water comes in so the place doesn't flood. Really simple puzzle. As soon as you take the sword, turn that dial all the way, and then we get to see a lovely Iron Maiden. Huh. Well, the only reason we had that sword is just to stab it into the Iron Maiden. Wait for it. Oh my god! And I also love this zombie. It didn't just, like, lose the sword. It's actually sticking out of the guy. Oh, that's that's really funny to me. A lot of good moments here in this other half of the prison. Except for this! Really? We came to the prison, fought through all this messed up tortury stuff, for that. For an out of place piano roll that was inside an Iron Maiden with a zombie that you had to stab through the chest just to open the Iron Maiden, all for a piano roll. That can only be used, mind you, in the palace. So immediately scenarios are going through my head, especially when I saw this like years later. I was going, oh my god, so this guy, this is almost the same as the biohazard card. So I'm thinking, so this guy, you know, maybe he's the, maybe he's the bartender, maybe he's the piano player over in uh, Sir Alfred's palace or whatever. He's, he's got this, and he's like, Oh, man, I really want to adjust this piano roll so people can't tell that I'm not actually playing. It's actually the piano. I'll take it with me. And then he becomes the, the subject of an experiment. Like, Alfred offers him, like, $100,000. He's like, Yeah, come come do this experimentation stuff. Don't worry. We'll treat you right. He's like, Oh, okay. hundred grand at the request of Sir Alfred? I could do that. And then he's the, he's the lonely and poor son of a bitch that gets put in the Iron Maiden. And Alfred's just outside cackling, just going, Let's see how long he lasts! <laughs> and I just can't see any other... I can see plenty of other scenarios, don't get me wrong, but... That just seems so stupid and out of place! Like, why couldn't that item have been maybe a key? I can see a key, but I can't see, like, a guy running around with a piano roll in his pocket, and then he dies via Iron Maiden and, like, torture. It just doesn't make sense to me. I'm overthinking it. I know for a fact I'm overthinking it. But hey, guess what? We're done with the prison. At least the main reason you were here. What we're going to do now is actually a quote-unquote side mission. You don't have to do this. And what's really interesting is I looked over some uh, some speedrunning tips, 
and how to get some different ranks in this game. Because this is another Resident Evil game that ranks you at the end based on, you know, time, number of times you've died, number of retries. And it's actually really interesting to see what you have to do to get an S rank. Because in my opinion, this is the hardest game to get a rank other than C. Anything lower than a C, chances are you'll get. Because this isn't a short game. This is one of the longest Resident Evil games I've ever seen, even when speedrunning it. I think, uh, back in the day I used to do a lot of speedruns. I think the fastest time I was able to do was five hours. And that's just like skipping enemies, running past everybody. And I still got like five hours and it didn't give me an S. I think the highest I've ever gotten is a B. So yeah, this game's very unforgiving. And the worst part is you have to be fast, but not only that, when you're doing your speed run, you have to do the side missions. If there's somebody that needs saving, you have to save them in order to get that S rank. It's ridiculous. Like, I'm almost wanting to look up a speed run just to see how they do this madness, what they're doing differently than I am. Maybe they're taking a different route. Maybe they're, they are literally, like, I know you can skip all the cutscenes and everything. What are you doing here? Hemostatic medicine. How kind of you. Thanks. Here, let me help you with that. Thanks, but I can take care of myself. Just go. Keep it. It was a gift from my brother, but... Thanks. Here, let me give you this in return. You might need it later on. Now go. Don't worry about me. Your lighter is now officially gone. You now have the lockpick. You'd better get out of here while you're still able. Okay, I think I will do that. Hey, see you later, man. I hope the medicine helps. There you go. That is how you get the lockpick. You have to forfeit your lighter and give... That guy, name please, you have to give him the hemostatic medicine and he will, in exchange, give you a lockpick. So now we can go around and unlock the things that we have seen that need a lockpick to unlock. There are quite a few places, actually, that need that lockpick in order to get just, you know, simple items. Very helpful, simple items. And I don't think we'll be hitting those just yet. Might save that for the next episode. We'll do a, we'll do a quick backtrack to all the places that have those. But that's all we need to do in the prison. It is officially 100% done. We don't have to come back here as Claire. We're home free. And now that we have the piano roll, we have another thing that we can do back at the palace. So that's what we're going to do next. Going to head back to the palace. Again, I love, I absolutely love the prison. That is a cool setting. Coming back to it just to get that weird item. Okay, sure. But hey, we're making advancements. We got a place to go. We've got a lockpick. Get us some extra goodies. I like goodies. How did that guy not hit me? How did he not hit me? Aw, <laughs> oh, man. I was hoping I could get by. I mean, he, pr he practically clotheslined me, but I didn't go down. Uh, let's, uh, make a quick trip back to the palace. We're home free. Let's get some stuff done. Hopefully no distractions. Greetings. You must be the lovely Claire Redfield. Who are you? Let's just say that I'm a ghost, coming back to haunt your dear brother. Whisker? It seems there's not much explaining to do, is there? I was the one who attacked this island. Who'd have thought you'd be hanging about? <laughs> All the better for me. Now that the cat dragged in this nice surprise, your ever so caring brother will definitely show up. I must thank you for being such good bait. I don't know what went on between you two, but you have them all wrong. My brother is not the kind of person you think he is. I despise Chris. Uh. 
What are you gonna do to him? some further use to me. I'm going to let you live a little longer. That is actually one of the new cutscenes added to Code Veronica X. A confrontation between Claire and Wesker. And believe it or not, this is the first time Wesker is seen as like a superhuman. Because the, the, he's been hinted at a couple times. Like, Zero, you see him in Zero. In one, he's dead. He dies at the end. Um, spoiler alert, but if you've made it this far, bleh, get over it. This is the first time we've seen Wesker, like, beefed up and powered up. You know what? I really like that. They give a little extra context as to who another one of your antagonists are. And then you also have... So not only do we have Alfred, we have Wesker to deal with. Excellent. That gives a little bit more to the story. Gives the animator something else to do. I really like the extra cutscenes that were added from the original game. Oh, by the way, all of that, just to put the piano roll in there, and to get the blue ant. The Sapphire King Ant. Good. Good. This is fine. We have it. We are done. Now we can go back to the castle, input the blue ant, and then we can go from there. You see how silly these games can get? I mean, not just in cutscene, not just in story, but just in regular gameplay. That's one of the reasons I really like this series. Just because of how silly it can get. So, rundown. We made it to the prison. We helped our keeper. We gave the hemostatic medicine away. We have a lockpick. We are going to be going to the different lockpick places after this, but first, let's see what we actually have. Nice! Combine that with your handgun. Upgraded handgun. It can now hold up to uh, 20? 20 shots, I believe? And you can now change it from automatic to manual, which means you can either shoot it in bursts of three or one shot at a time. Inside the other Duralumin case was bow gun powder. Always appreciated. Sweet. So it is advantageous to actually get the lockpick. Not bad. All right, so going over this again, we got the lockpick, we're done with the prison, we have the new Sapphire Ant, I'm thinking next time on Resident Evil Code Veronica X, we're going to make our rounds. We're going to unlock everything that needs to be unlocked before we move on, because as soon as we use that ant, story's going to happen. So we're going to make our rounds, get some items, and then we're going to go use that blue ant and progress more. There's actually not much left to Claire's part of the story. So I will see you guys next time.